Hello everyone, this is Dr. E and for today ay pag-aralan mo natin kung paano tayo mag-estimate ng mga square roots. Isa sa mga tips na lagi ko sinasabi sa mga students ko para gumaling sila sa mathematics is to master the multiplication table. At ito ang gagamitin natin para makapag-estimate tayo ng mga square roots. At alam natin na ang pagkuha ng square roots, minsan madali, minsan a little bit complicated. So, tandaan natin na ang pagkuha ng square roots or square root of x, makikita natin yung ating radical at yung ating root na tinatawag, ito yung tinatawag natin square root of x. Pero dahil kailangan natin ng simplified version ng ating mga mathematical expression. So, instead of writing 2 as a root, tinatanggal na natin yan. Kaya yung square root natin, kahit wala tayong nakikitang power of 2 or 2, square root pa rin matatawag ang radical symbol na iyan. At sa pagkuha ng ating square roots, tandaan natin na kailangan lang natin ma-master yung ating mga perfect squares. At ano nga ba yung mga perfect squares na yan? Yan yung mga 1, 4, 9, 16, and so on. So, pagka tinanong tayo kung ano ang square root ng 20, 25, square root of 25, of course, is equal to 5. Square root of uh, 100, we know is, square root is 10. And square root of 121, we know is 11. Dahil yan sa mga diagonals na nakikita natin, na tinatawag natin mga perfect squares. At yung mga perfect squares, madaling kuna ng square root dahil alam natin na when you multiply that number by itself, it will be equal to those diagonals. Pero ang gagawin nga natin, syempre, yung ating mga square roots ay estimate natin mula dun sa mga square roots na hindi regular. So, kung meron tayong square root of 9, alam na natin na square root of 9 is square root of 3 times 3, kaya siya naging 3. At kung meron tayong square root of 64, alam natin na square root of 64 ay 8 times 8, kaya meron tayong 8 as a square root of 64. At square root of 100, it will equal to... 10, and square root of 1, as we know, is going to equal to 1 because 1 times 1 is equal to 1. Pero paano naman kung tinanong natin or tatanungin tayo kung ano ang square root of 2? Alam natin ang 2 ay hindi perfect square, so kinakailangan natin gumamit ng calculator para makuha yung actual value ng square root of 2. Or paminsan, square root of 2 na lang yung nilalagay natin sa sagot. Pero for today, hanapin natin yung actual value ng mga square root ng mga number na hindi perfect square gamit itong estimation na gagamitin natin for today. So, ang square root of 2, well, hindi siya perfect square, pero alam natin na pwede pa natin siya simplify using the calculator. So, for now, let's just leave it at square root of 2. Dahil ngayon, kunin natin ang square root of 141. Same situation siya with square root of 2 dahil ang 141 ay hindi perfect square. So, paano ba natin kukunin yung ating mga values ng ating mga numbers tulad ng square root of 41? So, umpisahan natin sa pag-set up ng ating equation. So, pag-set up natin dito, square root of 141, iisip lang kayo ng... Uh, perfect squares na malapit kay 141. At ang dalawang perfect squares na yan ay ang square root of 121 at square root of 144. Bakit siya malapit? Dahil ang square root of 121 ay 11 at ang square root of 144 ay 12. So that means in between these two square roots will be the value of square root of 141 which will be 11 point something. It's going to be in between 11 and 12, not exceeding 12, and not less than 12. Ang tanong na lang natin ay ano yung decimal value na mag-estimate sa atin sa pagkuha ng square root of 141. So we're going to use hundreds as a decimal value para kay square root of 141 to approximate it to the nearest hundreds. So once we have this, Set up, ang gagawin naman natin ay kukunin yung ating mga numerical values as reference number. We have 121, 141, and 144. So yung ating mga values na 141 is in between the two perfect squares which is 121 and 144. At ang susunod nating step, ang mahalagang step sa pag-estimate ng ating decimal which is from the middle going to 121. Kunin natin yung difference niya. 
141 minus 121. And from 144 all the way to 121, kukunin natin yung difference nga. So 144 minus 121. So ito yung ating technique na gagamitin. At kukunin lang natin yung difference ng 141 and 121. At ang difference nyan would be equal to 20. At ang 144 minus 121, ang difference nyan ay equal sa 23. So ito yung magiging values na mag estimate ng ating decimal ng square root of 141. So ang susunod natin gagawin is kunin yung Decimal value ng 20 over 23. So, alam natin ang 20 over 23 ay pwede natin i-divide using long division. So, since hindi natin pwedeng gamitin si calculator, kahit nandito na sa katabi natin yung calculator, gagamitin natin si long division para makuha yung dalawang decimal placement or decimal um, value ni 11 point something para sa estimated value ni square root of 141. So let's do it right here. So 23 sa labas, 20 sa loob. So alam natin na it will become decimal kasi hindi pwedeng pumasok si 23 kay 20 pero si 23 pwedeng pumasok kay 200. So ilang 23 meron tayo kay 200. If you know your multiplication table really well, we know that we can fit 8 there or 8 23s kay 200. So 8 times 23 will equal to 184. Subtract natin siya, and 200 minus 184 is equal to 16. At alam natin na yung 16, hindi pa rin natin kayang i-divide sa 23 kay 16. So we add another 0 here. So now we have 160 that we're going to divide by 23. So ilang 23 meron kay 160, meron tayong 6 or anim, and 6 times 23 will give us 138. And from here... We're going to stop dahil nakuha na natin yung hundreds digit ng ating estimated value ni square root of 141, which is 11 plus 0.86. Bakit si 11 yung kinuha natin? Dahil syempre, in between 11 and 12 yung ating value, hindi pwedeng Lumiit kesa kay 11 at hindi pwedeng lumaki kesa kay 12. So hindi siya pwedeng 12 point something. It needs to be 11 point something or in between square root of 121 and 144. So ang square root ng 141 without using the calculator is approximately equal to 11.86 and we're able to do this by using this method. So, hindi natin nakikita si 0.86. Lagay natin dito para makita natin yung sagot natin which is 11.86 na approximated square root ng 141 and now we're able to find the square root of 141 without using the calculator and by just estimating the two perfect squares that's close to 141. So as a recap, we started with 121 and 144, which will be your uh, two perfect squares in between 141. Pag kinuha natin yung mga square root na mga yan, alam natin ang square root of 121 ay 11, ang square root of 144 ay 12. So ang ating value would be 11 point something. At ano yung point something na yan? Makakatulong sa atin si 121 and 144 to be able to figure that out. So 141 minus 121, yan ang una nating step para makuha natin yung isa sa mga numbers na i-divide natin mamaya lamang. So 141 minus 121 is 20 at yung 144 minus 121 would equal to 23. And now that we have those two numbers, which is in turn will become 20 over 23. So now we're going to divide this value since it's a proper fraction. We know that our value will be between 0 and 1. So how are we going to do that without using the calculator? We're going to do long divisions to find 0.86 at yan yung ating ginawa dito at naproduce natin si 0.86 by using long division. Now if you need to add more decimal place in your answer, you can continue your long divisions, but since sabi dun sa problem, nearest hundreds lang ang kailangan natin, kaya nag-stop na tayo after makuha si 0.86. Pero pag sinabing on um, thousands digit or ten thousands digit, that means magdadagdag lang kayo ng decimal value 
by completing your long division. At yan yung sagot natin para sa problem natin dito. At nakuha natin yan using long division by figuring out a way on how to produce yung ating mga estimated value para dito. So yan yung ating square root of 141. And now, let's try square root of 46. So square root of 46, tulad ng step na ginawa natin kanina, let's just repeat it. So now, sa lahat ng mga math problems, it's always easier to do it the second time around. So let's try to do it again. So square root of 46, isip kayo ng dalawang perfect square na close to 46 at yan ay 36 and 49. So we know that the square root of 36 is equal to 6 and square root of 49 is equal to 7. So that means our value is in between 6 and 7. So it should be 6.7. So now that we have this estimated value, we can now proceed to our decimal placement, which is nearest hundreds by using 36 in between or 46 in between 36 and 49. So dito, kukuha na tayo ng ating uh, fraction. So from 46 to 36, starting with the bigger value, which is 46, we will subtract it. And we will subtract 49 kay 36. 49 minus 36. At ang makukuha nating value dyan would be 46 minus 36 is 10 and 49 minus 36 is 13. So now meron tayong 10 all over 13 that we can change into its decimal form by dividing it using long division. So we have 13 outside and we have 10 outside. So we know that 13 cannot go to 10 unless we add another digit. So we're going to add zero here. So now we're looking at 100. So how many times 13 goes to 100? That's why kailangan alam natin ang ating multiplication table. Seven times. Seven times 13 is equal to 91. We subtract it. And 100 minus 91 is 9. At since kailangan natin ng hundredths digit at hindi tenths digit, so kailangan lang natin mag-add ng zero. So this will turn into 90. So how many times 13 goes to 90? Six times, and six times 13 is equal to 78. And from here, you don't need to subtract it because nakuha na natin yung hundreds digit. So that means ang ating square root of 46, not square root of 14, ang ating square root of 46 is approximately equal to 6.76. So yan yung ating value for square root of 46 and we're able to produce that using this technique that you can use as well when you are estimating your square root that happens to be not a perfect square. So we went and see the two um, uh, perfect squares in between square root of 46. Siyempre, alam natin na square root of 36 yan, square root of 49, which we know is 6 and 7. Now, in between that, we'll be able to find the decimal value, which is 6 point something, and that something will be 46 minus 36 and 49 minus 36, which is 13. At yung ating proper fraction, which is 10 over 13, will help us find the estimated decimal value that we are looking for. So by using long division, we're able to find out that 13 divided by 10 is equal to 0.76. At ito ang ating proof kung paano natin nakuha si 0.76. Kaya alam natin na pag inad natin yan, si 6 at saka si 0.76, we'll have 6.76, which is the square root that we're able to find without using a calculator. And if you want to verify it, you can use your calculator or your phone to find the actual value of square root of 46. At yan ang ating lesson for today. Kaya ang ating number bender challenge for today is itry nyo yung ating technique kung paano mag-estimate ng square root na hindi perfect square ng hindi gumagamit ng calculator. So find the value of square root of 240 and comment it down below and let's see kung makukuha nyo yung sagot 
na hindi gumagamit ng technology. At yan ang lesson natin for today, which is estimating our square root. And again, mastery of your multiplication table is key if you really want to be better in mathematics. Dahil, pag na-master na natin yung ating mga basic, mas mauunawaan natin yung mga complex problems na may encounter natin, natin in the future. This is Dr. E and see you again next time. Bye!